In 2010, Boeing hoped to complete a crewed Starliner mission by 2015. But yet here we are in 2022, and the Starliner has simply seen delay after delay and failure after failure. Meanwhile, SpaceX has been making tremendous progress in terms of Crew Dragon. The company already completed seven crewed missions using Crew Dragon, and Crew Dragon will only be used more frequently moving forward. But is Boeing Starliner a complete failure? Well, hang on till the end of this video as we rip off everything we can tell you about Boeing Starliner line by line, word by word. Frankly, not a failure. The Starliner program has just been a disaster in all aspects. First, it's actually painful to remember that NASA dumped $4.2 billion of taxpayer money onto Boeing to build this spacecraft. Furthermore, in an award that NASA's own Inspector General described as unnecessary, NASA paid Boeing an additional $287.2 million. This brings Boeing's total to $4.49 billion. For the same services, the development of Crew Dragon and six operational missions, NASA paid SpaceX $2.6 billion. After its initial award, NASA has agreed to buy additional eight flights from SpaceX, Crew 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, all through the year 2030. This brings the total contract awarded to SpaceX to $4.93 billion. Since we know now how many flights each company will be providing NASA through the lifetime of the ISS and the full cost of those contracts, we can break down the price NASA's paying each company per seat by amortizing the development cost. Boeing and flying 27 astronauts has a per seat price of $183 million. SpaceX and flying 56 astronauts during the same time frame has a seat price of $88 million. Thus, NASA is paying Boeing 2.1 times the price per seat than they're paying SpaceX, inclusive of development cost incurred by NASA. What a ridiculous expense. The important thing is that Boeing Starliner is stuck on the ground. In other words, Starliner has not transported an astronaut yet. The spacecraft really just has a history of error. Starliner's development has proven to be a long, bumpy ride. In 2019, the capsule could not be placed in the correct orbit because of a clock problem and had to return to Earth after two days. Boeing then realized that other software concerns had nearly led to a serious flight anomaly. NASA prescribed a long list of recommendations and modifications to be made. Then in 2021, as the rocket was about to be sent into orbit from the launch pad, a humidity problem caused a chemical reaction preventing the opening of some of the capsule valves. It was sent back to the factory for inspection where it stayed for 10 months. It was not until just a few months ago that Boeing Starliner spacecraft finally docked at the International Space Station for the first time, but not without a glitch. At this point, Boeing Starliner has a crewed test flight set early next year, likely February. Its first operational mission will not come before the second half of 2023. Now, to be fair, let's dive into the design of Starliner itself. Disappointedly, Boeing is making technology that looked the same as many decades ago. It can't be compared to the modern SpaceX Dragon. The Crew Dragon 2 has a better heat shield that would enable it to be used for faster re-entry back to Earth, thus enabling it to function beyond LEO that the ISS is in. Importantly, even if Boeing succeeds fully, which we truly hope they do, they'll only be able to produce two launches per year. It's one-use throwaway rocket system built from legacy parts out of the space shuttle. SpaceX redesigned their rockets and Crew Dragon capsule from the ground up by reverse engineering old engines, systems, etc., and radically improving each area with 21st century interfaces, materials, and know-how. Now let's talk about the size and capacity aspect. The Starliner capsule is a silver, somewhat squat, broad-based cone shape, coming in at just over 17 feet tall and just under 15 feet in diameter. The completely autonomous Starliner is required to carry four NASA crew members and scientific research when it eventually travels to the ISS. Meanwhile, a Dragon is more elongated, candy-white, cone-shaped capsule, 26.5 feet tall and a diameter just greater than 13 feet with 11 cubic meters of internal volume. It makes parachute-aided splashdowns in the ocean when its work in orbit is done. 
It is fully autonomous, but can be monitored and controlled by both onboard astronauts and SpaceX Mission Control in Hawthorne, California. It has two main elements, the capsule, which carries crew and cargo, and the trunk, and three windows. Its astronaut-specific amenities include four big windows, advanced avionics, computer systems, and touchscreen displays, including controls for interior temperature that can be set between 18 to 27 degrees Celsius, and of course, seats. Crew Dragon is outfitted with an emergency escape system, which consists of eight Super Draco engines built into the capsule wall. If something goes wrong at any point during a Crew Dragon flight, these engines can fire up and take the spacecraft and passengers to safety. Starliner's emergency escape system contains four launch abort engines built into the capsule's service module. Boeing performed a hot fire test of these engines, which were provided by aerospace company Aerojet Rocketdyne, but they detected a propellant leak shortly after. Dragon's technology definitely is a big humiliation with Starliner. After all, Starliner blows the reputation of the aerospace industry and a setback to NASA. The legacy aerospace giant has been crippled by years of bad news about Starliner. For decades following the Cold War, Boeing was known for its engineering excellence, with its mastery showing up in innovative bombers and other military planes. Unfortunately, somewhere a shift happened, and those years of technical know-how fell under question after two fatal 737 crashes in 2019. Then a software problem on Starliner put an onboard clock off by 11 hours, leading the computer to think it was at an entirely different point in the mission, which caused the spacecraft to fire its engines incorrectly and waste fuel. The fallout from the capsule calamity in 2019 allowed Musk's scrappy upstart SpaceX to leave Boeing in the stardust, with at least five manned missions to the ISS under its belt before Boeing has even made one. Importantly, Starliner screw-ups put NASA's relationship with Boeing to the test. One software problem was found and fixed mid-flight. Another potentially more hazardous glitch was discovered once the capsule landed in the New Mexico desert. NASA and Boeing undertook a joint investigation to figure out why the mistakes happened. It contributed to the firing of CEO Dennis Muhlenberg, and after the flawed flight, the company also replaced its Starliner program manager with a new executive. 80 software tweaks later, NASA said Boeing could try again, but this time it's on Boeing's dime. The relationship was officially broken. Let's hope that Boeing executives think they can do a better job on their next fixed price assignment, or at least feel NASA's generous payments for building the space launch system to make up some of Starliner's loss. The U.S. Space Agency needs a competitor for SpaceX, and thus far, none of the obvious contenders have stepped up to the plate. Boeing has the capital and experience, but today, they just need to prove they can execute. That just about wraps it up for today's episode. Hey, don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section below because everyone's support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.